I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but let's go for a ride. We've got uh, improved ca camera angle now, I think. Um, I've mounted the microphone to my helmet, so I'm not suffering with a big metal wire sticking through my helmet. Um, what else? It's daytime, so I'm not running a headlight. And yeah, it's a nice day. We're gonna do a grocery store run. Always fun. Here we go. I always love bombing down this hill, but it does get a little sketchy when there's a car coming. It's a super windy day today. Um, it's so windy that I can barely hear myself talk, so I have no idea how this microphone picks my voice up, but somehow it does. Looks like we've got another biker up here. I'm going to start slowing down now because it takes a while going downhill. Actually, I'm going to cut through this parking lot because I don't want to interfere. It's like the roads are pretty busy. It's Memorial Day, even though it's a pandemic. Let's see which way this guy's gonna go. All right. We got winds from the south today, so we got a nice tailwind right now. I'm thinking I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, hitting some top speeds today. More of a southwest, or sorry, southeast kind of thing. So I spent the morning repairing my bike a little bit. There's a few things here and there, nothing major, but I went for a ride with the family and we had to pass our bikes through a fence which was a little bit of a challenge because the bike weighs 80 pounds. So imagine yourself passing a small child through, sorry, a large child through a fence that's big enough for maybe a dog to get through and that's what I had to get my bike through. Uh, ended up getting it through, but it was entertaining for the rest of the family. And uh, I don't know, I knocked my dashboard off and a few other things. Something came out of alignment, but all in all, nothing major. And I have to say, try getting your motorcycle through a fence. That's not happening. So it's give and take. Also allergy season is here. So you are hearing me sniffle and snuffle and that's because that happens this time of year for me and a lot of other people, and I'm sure it's a great thing. Especially when there's a pandemic, everybody loves it when you walk into the store and start having a sneezing attack. All right, we got, I'm doing 35.5, and there's almost no wind. That, I mean, you know, relatively speaking. Got a little tiny bit of a wind from the front here, but for a moment there it was dead silent. So it gives you an idea what kind of wind we're talking about here today. I'm gonna to say 25 mile an hour sustained from the south. Uh, I got some feedback from the last video, which again, these are just test videos. So I don't know what I'm doing, but got a shout out from that motorcycle there. 
But as I get my equipment dialed in, I might launch another, I don't know, launch another YouTube channel or something for this, if there's enough interest. E-bikes are a lot of fun. You can do things on them that you wouldn't be able to do with any other type of transportation. That's my favorite thing about it. It's part bicycle, it's part motorcycle, and you can get places very quickly. And once you're there, you can park your bike without having to worry about parking. You can go through neighborhoods without pissing anyone off. And uh, I don't know, it's just awesome. And a lot of people don't know about it. More people know about it every year, but for the most part, it's still the Wild West. And that's one of the things I, you know, sometimes I get worried about it because as it becomes more accessible to people, give these people some nice social distance here, um, you, get, you get crazies out there. They're riding these Chinese bikes they got for 500 bucks and they're totally unsafe and ruining it for everybody. We've already seen this phenomenon where people are uh, yelling at the e-bikers and proposing bans and so forth, which is exactly the opposite of what we need to be doing because we've got a transportation mode that's actually really environmentally friendly and it gets people outdoors gets people on bikes who would otherwise not be able to. It's a great thing. I'm gonna jump over on the sidewalk here. That motorcycle guy is getting a big kick out of my ride. Well, it seems, seems like the tire place is uh, up and running. I've seen things come back online here. So I usually don't do this. In fact, I think I'm not going to. This is always a real mess. If I, if I go through here, I usually take the traffic lane, but I'm not going to. comes the wind now. Going back is going to be a real treat with a 25 mile an hour headwind. But it'll be a good test for the mic. There's actually a bike lane on this road now. For years, I rode on this road. Well, this guy apparently wants to use it, too. Um, for years, I rode on this uh, road to get past the interstate. And there was no bike lane, and the, and the road was all shredded up. So I used to have to just ride right along with the traffic, which was a real treat. A lot of treats. And uh, I remember more than once I slammed a pothole so hard that my battery pack just broke off the bike and I had to repair it. So these days things have gotten a lot better. They repaved it, put it in a bike lane. Sorry for all the camera bounce. You're strapped to my chest and I'm hitting these bumps. So we're just gonna wait at this light here like a good citizen. I got a green light. jumped in here before. I think, yeah, maybe I could do that here. <laughs> Go through the rotunda. Again, nothing you could do with a motorcycle. Nice empty lots are always fun when you can do 35 miles an hour through them. But I'll slow it down here so I don't freak anyone out. Actually, there's a bike rack right up here. e-bike look at that seen more all the time yeah I'm gonna use the other rack 
because this thing's heavy. All right, so here's how this works. I've got, this is a kryptonite lock, but it's the keeper model. So it actually clamps the bike. And I've got my, my top bar aligned with just any part of the bike rack. I don't even use the bike rack because it's, it doesn't have a dream of holding up an 80 pound bike. So, but I have a good kickstand. And then uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kill the ignition here, grab my key out. The other key is the kryptonite lock. So I can just go da -doo, like that. It's like one smooth motion. Run it through here and then down through and pick it up on the other side. I mean, it's spike locking. It's nothing that's that new, but you can see how you can see how it gets done around here with the with the setup. Yeah, so you know, there you go. That's where I'll leave it. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't do that in the inner city, but we live in a pretty good area. So, and I'm just doing a quick trip. I'll be out in five minutes. I'm back out of the store. Did my quick pandemic shopping trip. I had my eyes assaulted with a plethora of customers who all decided it was a good time to go shopping. And I had my uh, ears assaulted with generic shopping store hits like uh, Hunka Hunka Burnin' Love and Papa's Got a Brand New Bag. And I tried my best not to do the over shopping, which is the sort of the bane of the electric bike because you only have so much space. Luckily, I have a trunk, which allows me to put bulky items in the top where they won't get crushed and then heavy items in the saddlebags which seem to have almost limitless capacity. I tend not to use the shopping bag at all because it's just a complicated thing that I don't need. Although this time because I have a few wet items I probably will use those in the bag. Uh, got some potatoes here. I will of course have to clean all this stuff when I get home anyways because it's a pandemic. Um, yeah, so here we go. That's one bag's full, pretty much full. I could probably pack some more in there if I wanted to, but try to keep it balanced. In this side, I have my tools and some extra capacity for extra groceries. There we go. Everything's in there. And then I got to put the recorder in there. <laughs> 